All right, hello and welcome to uh, the first part in my Retro City Rampage clone in Unity tutorial. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, this is a new tutorial series I'm doing. Uh, thank you to all the people that liked the... I put the Polite Miami clone playlist on Reddit when I finished it and loads of people liked that and I got like 30 new subs and a couple of people even bought the asset pack that I put on Itch.io, which you can download, link will be in the description. Which was quite a nice surprise. I didn't think anyone would get, but they did. And if you have any questions about that or whatnot, just leave a comment, email me. I put the in my email for it in the uh, description, not the description, a uh, little help document I included with the asset pack. But yeah, today we are just going to be doing a uh, basic movement for the Retro City Rampage style. So basically, Retro City Ramp. I'll show you what I've programmed and I'll just explain it. So Retro City Rampage basically has, uh, I think it's eight axes of movement. My maths, I wasn't good at maths, but whatever. Basically eight axis movement, so down diagonally, up diagonally, up down left right and that. And yeah, I'm going to show you how I program that. Pretty much it's pretty easy. And the art assets as well, so I'll just show you that first. Basically, uh, because Unity on the sprite renderer, we can have a... We can flip it on the X and Y axis. We don't need like a sprite for each uh, direction. We just need like one. So you need one for each for up and down because they'll be facing different ways. But for left and right and diagonals, you just need uh, them to face one direction. It doesn't matter which one, as long as you remember which direction you put them facing initially. So when you do the other direction, so say they're facing left now, you'd flip it when you go right. And so that means you don't need another set of sprites and you save memory and whatnot and it's all good. Yeah. So that's just a little note on the assets and I don't know why. It, I just had a marker for which one was which. I'm sorry they look quite bad. I'm not an artist, but hopefully I'll get better. All right, let's kick open Mono Develop, and I will show you the two scripts. I've got the person movement and player input. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Let's see. Opening, come on. All right, so I've got two scripts today. We've got a person movement and we've got player input. Now, the reason these are in two separate uh, scripts is that with the uh, person movement, it literally uh, just has the animation, so sprite arrays, which I've not learned how to use the Unity animation things yet, and I just find this easier, to be honest, so uh, we've got, but yeah, sorry, go ahead and resolve. The reason it's split into two scripts is because if we were to, we could use this, we could reuse the person movement script again with, say, like, civilians, like, you could just have an AI uh, script for them, calling the move up, move down, and whatnot, uh, methods rather than the player input so it just include uh, basically makes it so it's reusable which is always good it means let's go to write in the future all right so yeah so basically got sprite arrays which contain all the sprites and an active sprite which is this active sprite array is just used on the uh it's basically just the animation it is so the script knows which sprite array to animate that's just set when you call the movement and uh, we've got a public string, which is direction, which is just set to down as default. But basically, this isn't used yet. It's just going to be for reference, say, if we're spawning bullets, as an example, like which direction for them to go. Uh, we've got animate is false. So this is set to move when any of the movement uh, functions, methods, whatever they're called, are called. So it'll animate while input's being detected or the functions are being called or whatnot. Sprite render is just the sprite render on the player or if this is on a different kind of object, whatever that was. Uh, animate timer, this is just the reset value for it. Might have to add like another one when I add running and jumping and stuff. And the counter is just counting through the array. And the speed is how fast the uh, person moves. All right, so basically this just gets the sprite renderer off the game object it's on, sets the active to down, so it'll face down when the scene loads and then it'll assign the sprite which is basically 
this just sets the sprite to the currently active uh, the first array sorry the first element in the array of the currently active uh, direction of sprite array so so you so it starts down so and that gets set so yeah uh, so it'd be down facing down so it'd be uh, the first element of the down array would be the current sprite and then sorry i'm not doing a very good job of explaining this but yeah it just basically this sets the sprite renderer to be the current sprite of the counter value of the active sprite array all right and for each of the movements so we've got move up move down left right right down right up these are just the diagonal ones and yeah so basically <clears throat> uh what it does it sets the app when well, when well, when when one of these is called, it sets the respective uh, sprite array. So in this case, we're moving up towards the top of the screen. So it'll set the active to being up. Uh, and then we stop flipping the x-axis because it's not really needed. For, well, it won't really matter. It'll look the same anyway. And then it sets data up. So in the future, if we need to reference like what direction it's going, we can find that easily. And then it moves it by translating using transform.translate to vector e up time speed time step delta time to make sure it's all smooth and consistent with the frame rate and yeah uh move down does the same uh move right in this case is a little different because it you sets sprite renderer dot flip x to true so this is saying we want to flip the sprites so they look like they're facing the other way because if you we remember uh the sideways sprites were facing left, so we'd have to flip them to go right. They look the same, but I just it's like exactly the same. Like this is left going left, and now we're going right, so it's flipped it. Uh, it's still using the same sprites, but it looks like it's going right instead of left. Simple. Uh, the right down uh, the diagonal ones for both down and up use the same principle. Uh, is same as left they're all facing left or for the respective up or down so if we're going right we need to flip them and basically instead of using one vector three so we just use the both of them so in this case we're going right and down so we add the vector threes for right and the down and then just multiply that by speed and time dot delta time and that's pretty much the same for all the other diagonal ones and finally in the person movement we've got set animate true so and these are set animated true or false. Yeah, simple enough. And then this means that we can we only call the animate sprite script, which basically just counts down and cycles through the array and goes back to zero when the uh, sprite array finishes. So yeah, uh, pretty much it. Uh, well, player input. Now, this basically just looks for keyboard input. So it looks at W, A, S, and D keys and uses the person movement scripts that it's got on the player object. But we need to check these in a particular order. So all the, uh, all the, uh, sorry, all the diagonal inputs need to be checked first because if we were pressing, uh, if like the, like say up was first, it wouldn't be able to get to the diagonal ones that include W because it'd see, oh, W is the impressed. So it'd just go move up, even if we were pressing A or D and whatnot. So yeah, that's why the diagonals have to be first because it's checked for both conditions and then it gets less picky just looking for one key being pressed. And then if any other combination of keys are being pressed, like uh, all of the keys or, oh shit, uh, or be impressed or whatever, then it just won't do anything. And I've deleted that by accident. Shit. There we go. So, yeah. Uh, I should stop pressing bloody keys. Uh, so, yeah, this is the player input script, simple at the moment, but we're going to expand it in the next episode. And this is the person movement and animate script. Simple enough concept. Probably not. Might not be the best way to do it, but it's the way I've chosen to.
Here's all the other stuff. And here's one final look at the sprite sheet. If I can get that open. Yep. Well, that works up, down, left and right in the diagonals. So yeah. Cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out my other tutorials, buy my assets on itch.io, and help me eat. Oh uh, yeah. Bye.